now available from Polygram Video. NFL's Feel the Power puts you in the middle of the action and unveils the hidden power of the NFL's elite. The NFL's Greatest Games delivers the play-by-play -play power of resilience in two volumes, the Ice Bowl and Super Bowl III. With NFL's Greatest Moments, you'll catch the most powerful images of pro football. Throws his pass, caught by Clark! It's caught out of the air by Frank O'Hare! Coach Shula has won number 325. Experience the power of laughter with NFL <laughs> talking Follies. Okay, throw a fake ball and keep the real ball in your shirt. You can't use more than one ball. Mom! NFL Throwbacks brings you the power of tradition and links future stars with heroes from the past. Lock and load, baby! Lock and load! Collect your favorite teams and witness the power of teamwork with the NFL official video yearbooks. Collect them all and feel the power of NFL films on home video. New Edge Pro Gel, official sponsor of NFL Team Highlight Films. Edge Pro Gel will give you a shave so comfortable that no other gel or foam can beat it. For a great, comfortable shave every day, try New Edge Pro Gel. Save your skin. After a brilliant finish the year before, expectations were rising for the 1996 Seahawks. But when Seattle lost its first three games, all to division opponents, the season appeared to be in jeopardy. And loyal followers agonized as the experts forecast even more trouble in the weeks to follow. But such predictions failed to deter the players. Their mirror image, the true one, reflected a team unrattled by defeat and eager to atone for their dreary September. The comeback began in Tampa on defense against the Buccaneers. The Bucks were restricted to barely 200 total yards, while the offense rallied from a fourth quarter deficit on the strength of touchdowns by Brian Blades and Lamar Smith. Meyer gives on the draw to Smith, breaks through at the 10, to the 5, touchdown Lamar Smith for the Seahawks! With 31 seconds left to go in the game, Smith breaks it for 14 yards and the Seahawks lead. Two weeks later, the Hawks return to not-so-sunny Florida. A torrential downpour failed to dampen the club's firepower as a long-range passing attack wilted Dolphin coach Jimmy Johnson's pompadour with another last-minute victory. In the tight end on the right, here's the flip down the field, up the left sideline to Galloway. Galloway makes the catch and breaks free. Touchdown Seahawks, Joey Galloway. Galloway with a leaping grab goes 65 yards for a touchdown. Play fakes to Chris, good protection. John fires the long ball down to middle of Galloway. Got it at the 10 yard line. Joey to the five. Joey oh, touchdown. Man. He yards Joey Galloway. A 51 yard strike for John Bree. The Dolphins could contain neither Galloway nor avoid the Seahawks punishing tackler. <laughs> Underdog Seattle refused to go quietly yet still trailed late in the game when the defense made its final stand, giving a native son from Miami yet another opportunity to make good in his home state. Please drops, pressure on it. He looks, he throws down the middle, caught by Blades. He's in the open field. He might go. Touchdown, Seahawks, Brian Blades. Can you believe it? The two Florida comebacks clearly proved the Seahawks were going to be trouble to anyone spoiling for a fight.
Much of the resilient temperament exhibited by the 96 Seahawks could be attributed to Dennis Erickson's forceful leadership. Now fully entrenched as part of the NFL coaching fraternity, Erickson and his staff of assistants guided the team through a difficult opening month, then pushed Seattle back into playoff contention. The defensive coaches made vital contributions, creating one of the NFL's most aggressive pass rushing schemes, then augmenting it with active linebackers and an opportunistic secondary. Offensively, Seattle's coaches assembled the league's fifth best rushing attack while maintaining a remarkable run-pass balance despite injuries and a constantly fluctuating situation at quarterback. Not surprisingly, some of the most explosive firepower came from Seattle's special teams. Kicker Todd Peterson set franchise records for most points and field goals in a season, and punting counterpart Rick Tootin remained among the league's elite launching drives that made tackling a pleasure for coverage aces James McKnight, Jason Kyle, and Fred Thomas. Setting the pace was number 20, Jay Bellamy, who established a new club record for special team tackles. Another prolific tackler was Ronnie Harris, who could also cause considerable damage bringing kicks back the other way. While Harris handled most of the punt returns, kickoffs remained the primary responsibility for Steve Broussard. Broussard just missed recording back-to-back -back seasons with 1,000 return yards. And his 86-yard gallop against the Chiefs was the longest non-scoring play in Seahawks history. Broussard also shared backfield time with Max Strong, Oscar Gray, and Reggie Brown, running behind one of the league's most durable offensive lines. Neither left tackle James Atkins or right tackle Howard Ballard missed a single play the entire season. Center Kevin Mawai started every game, as did guard Derek Graham. And after recovering from a knee injury, rookie Pete Kendall became a permanent fixture at the other guard position. Perhaps no one appreciated the Lions efforts more than Lamar Smith, who filled in admirably when starter Chris Warren was injured or needed a breather. Despite only part-time duty, Smith raced for 680 yards, which would have made him the top ball carrier on half a dozen other NFL teams. Couple of quick moves by Lamar Smith, and then he explodes across the goal line. And that's the nice changeup that he offers, and it's into the end zone for Lamar Smith. Fresh off their two Florida wins, the Seahawks were eager to continue their winning ways against the Chiefs before a national primetime TV audience. Right back to throw Bono, dumps the screen, got it there, complete fumbles the football. Anders was hit by Winston Moss. Is it Seattle football or not? It is. Dean Wells is running with a football. Wells is going to go all the way. Wells to the 20. Wells to the 10. Touchdown Seahawks. Dean Wells, 58 yards. Although the officials mysteriously nullified the fumble recovery and run back, Winston Moss and Dean Wells turned in plenty of big plays that did count. The linebacking pair were easily Seattle's busiest defenders, finishing first and second on the team tackling charts. Along with Terry Wooden and Michael Barber, Seattle's linebackers disrupted running lanes and flushed passers out of the pocket. From there, the Seahawks' defensive backs took charge. The secondary specialized in punishing hits, but was even more skilled at picking opponents' pockets, thanks to the thievery of Jay Bellamy. Robert Blackman, Corey Harris, and interception leader Daryl Williams. 
In fact, it was Seattle's pass defense that sparked the team's first divisional win of the season in week nine against the Chargers. You need that corner, the corner's gonna get to a piece. Called the Psychic Network last night. <laughs> Deion Warwick. That's what she told me at least. Game time. Bellamy's prediction was right on the money. The Seahawks forced five turnovers, including four interceptions, en route to their first win over San Diego since 1993. Pressure steps forward to pocket, throws, intercepted by the Seahawks. Robert Blackman, Blackman on the return. Now we can take 33 over here. Instead of going double banded against that 22 bandit, what we'll do over here is go green on this side. Okay, go green on this side, and we'll go bandit over here because the guy goes across. He's man to man. Even when the secondary guessed wrong, the end result still came out right. Fires long down the right side. Wide open. He's got a man at the 50. To the 40. Fumbles the football. Seahawks have come up with it. Coming the other way. Then Darrell Williams happily applied the coup de gras. Salisbury short drop. Looking down the middle. Throws. Intercepted. Picked off by the Seahawks, Darrell Williams, he might go the distance at the 50, 45, 40. They'll never get him. There's a penalty flag down on the play, but Darrell Williams will go all the way for a Seahawks touchdown. Williams' marathon return was the longest, but not the only big play of the afternoon. Led by Chris Warren, Seattle's running game rushed for more than 200 yards in their highest output of the season as the Seahawks cruise to their first home victory of 1996. Warren finds an opening to the 25, to the 20, to the 50. He'll dance into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks, Chris Warren. But victory appeared to be out of reach the following week against Houston. With the game tied at 16 in the closing moments, the Oilers drove steadily downfield setting up a cozy field goal attempt for Al Del Greco, who hadn't had a kick blocked in more than a decade. Clock runs with 35 seconds left to go in the game. So the Seahawks are going to go with the field goal prevent team that they've had all season long. And the guys up front, Sam Adams, Cortez in the middle, Phillips, McCrary. 37-yard field goal attempt that should win the ball game. Locked down to 17 seconds to go. Place down. Kick on. Block. Block by the Seahawks. Picking it up is McCrary. That is the Blackman. He may go. He's gone. Touchdown, Seahawks. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. What an unbelievable, incredible, stupendous finish to a football game here in the Kingdom today. Well, I'll tell you what, the Seahawks, this is a team that will not quit. Find your rear ends off out there for 60 minutes. Things happen. It came down to one play. We make the play. We win the football game. That all, that's all that matters. And I'll tell you what, good teams win like that. And you're a good football team. That's a heck of an effort. <laughs> Man, Seahawks are back, man. We're here. We're looking good. We're coming back. We're on the NFL comeback trail. First, we got Miami. Got Miami. Then we took out Tampa. Took out Tampa. Man. And then San Diego. So we're there, good. man. Look out, NFL. Back. Look out. Adding in the miracle finish against Houston with a demolition of the Vikings a week later, and Seattle was clearly back in the playoff hunt. John Freese takes the snap, Blue hops it deep in the left corner of the end zone. The Galloway makes the catch. Touchdown, Seahawks! Joey Against Galloway. Minnesota, the Seahawks reached season highs for points scored and yardage gained, due in large part to yet another brilliant performance by quarterback John Freese. With four wins and five starts, Freese was playing as well as any passer in the league. I rolled the dice there thinking he was bluffing, and he did. If, they, if that corner's bumped hard, I'll throw the fade, but he wasn't either, so I, I felt like he bailed, and they did. Broussard is the single setback. Play fake to Steve, firing down the middle, got an end, touchdown, Ricky Prohl! The secret of Freeze's success came from an ability to take advantage of all his receiving options, from zone buster Brian Blades to acrobatic artist Mike Pritchard.
And it wasn't just Pritchard who made eye-popping catches. The tight end core of Carlester Crumpler, Ronnie Williams, and Christian Fourier all played vital roles in Seattle's revived passing game. By mid-November, the Seahawks were five and five and riding the hot hand of freeze as they traveled to Motown for a battle with the Lions. But after Freeze suffered a season-ending leg injury, an early Seattle lead vanished, and the Seahawks eventually dropped a one-point heartbreaker on the game's final play. Two more defeats followed, ending playoff hopes for 96. Yet through all the ups and downs of the season, the one constant the Seahawks could always depend on was the defensive line. was a trademark of ends Antonio Edwards and Philip Daniels, who provided quality depth to a front four unmatched by any fast rushing unit in the NFL. In his third season, number 98 Sam Adams consistently displayed the skills that had made him a number one draft choice. Sam's power rush up the middle chewed up quarterbacks or funneled the action outside towards end Michael McCrary, number 99. McCrary wasn't even in the starting lineup until week four, yet still tied for the conference lead with 13 and a half quarterback sacks. On the other side, number 70, Michael Sinclair was just as deadly. Sinclair logged four sacks in week two against Denver, a breakout performance that eventually helped earn him his first appearance in the Pro Bowl. Every Seattle pass rusher owed a major debt to the big man in the middle. Opponents discovered that a turn onto Cortez Kennedy Street became little more than a devastating detour down the boulevard of broken dreams. Kennedy's honors were numerous. Team MVP, large and award winner, a six straight Pro Bowl, all pro honors, and general acceptance by those who should know as the finest defensive tackle in the NFL. Just another day at work for Cortez Kennedy, but that's why this guy is so good. That's why he's going for the Pro Bowl, because he just disrupts things at the line of scrimmage. The relentless rush of Kennedy and company was at its best in the final home game of the season against the Buffalo Bills. The Bills needed a win to reach the playoffs, but the defensive line simply wasn't going to let that happen. Seattle never let up, dropping Buffalo quarterbacks nine times. Yeah! He's just stepping back. He's not kicking out. He's just stepping back because he don't want you to speed him when he beat him inside. I'm, uh, I'm going to go put it. Kelly drops the throw, sets up at the 10. Michael Sinclair gets to it. Fumble with the football. Sam Adams comes up with it. It's the end of football at the 12 yard line. Clearly, this victory belonged to the front four. And it was also the defense that dominated in the season finale against the Raiders, tallying seven more sacks to go along with an astonishing nine forced fumbles. Hoffman up the middle, dances to his right, breaks one tackle, fumbles, the Seahawks pick it up. Here he coming the other way for the Seahawks as Corey Harris inside the 10. Harris is finally dropped at the Raiders' six-yard line. If this game turns out as a win for the Seahawks, it's going to be the defense that gets game balls for this one. Injuries for Seattle to play fourth-string quarterback Gino Toretta, who had only signed on the month before. Yet somehow, the crippled Seahawk attack squeezed out just enough yardage to earn the victory. Long count by Toretta, hands on the draw to Smith, big hole, 25-20, Lamar to the 15, Smith inside the 10, keeps going, touchdown Seahawks, Lamar's By winning.
winning two late games with no more than pride at stake, the Seahawks proved they would not back down, earning them respect in 1996 and perhaps much more in the season to come. Even the Pike play Salmon agree. Whenever opposing defenses lined up against the Seahawks, the one that got away wore number 42. Taking no prisoners. Taking all comers. Get in line. Despite missing two full games and substantial chunks of three others, Chris Warren was still one of the league's most effective ground gaining weapons. Chris led the team in rushing for the fifth straight season. He broke off the longest touchdown run of his career and now has more hundred yard games than any other ball carrier in Seahawks history. on the drop, busted through at the 35, 30, breaks the tackle, he's gone! Chris Warren, touchdown Seahawks! He got great about the 25-yard line, and when Chris Warren does that in the open field, there aren't many players who are gonna catch him. Seattle's other big playmaker was constantly inventing new ways to devastate opposing teams. Ruin gets away a nice kick coming down to Galloway at his own 12 yard line. Joey Stutter stepping his way around, gets around, gets one block at the 15 to the 20, breaks three. 30 yard line, Galloway to the 40. He is gone. Joey Galloway. He had absolutely no business getting away from that initial wave of tackles. None whatsoever. Joey did it again. The man is magical. Perhaps his greatest magic trick was his ability to make defenders disappear. After a splendid rookie season, Galloway laughed in the face of the sophomore jinx. Joey led the team in receptions, yardage, and touchdowns. And only one player in the conference posted a higher yards per catch average. Galloway and Warren have been the centerpieces of the Seahawk attack. And Seattle staff has been hard at work adding more game breakers to the defense. Well, the number one thing we wanted to go into the offseason and do was to strengthen ourselves on defense. We were able to do that with Chad Brown out of Pittsburgh, a linebacker and a rush guy. And, and of course, we had uh, Paul Allen supporting us, so that made a big difference. And he likes the Seattle area. He's from the West, and he really felt that we had a chance to be successful. So once we got him there, we just kind of recruited him like in college, and we were able to get him. And, and we really think it's going to improve us as a football team. In Chad Brown, the Seahawks grabbed the top prize in the 97 free agent sweepstakes. At 26, he is clearly the best young outside linebacker in the game today and should make an already potent Seattle pass rush one of the NFL's most destructive forces. A few days after Brown came to terms, Steeler teammate Willie Williams decided Seattle was also the best place to be. During Pittsburgh's 1995 Super Bowl season, Williams was the AFC's leading interceptor, and he'll bring that same toughness and athleticism to the Seahawk cornerback position. But Paul Allen and Football Northwest were just getting started in their off-season maneuvers. Seattle will sport the first brother combination in franchise history with the arrival of hard-hitting Lions safety Benny Blaze. While Benny looks forward to being reunited with brother Brian, it's also a homecoming for Vikings quarterback Warren Moon, who returns to the city of his college alma mater. The former Washington Husky standout is one of the most prolific passers in NFL history and has gone to the Pro Bowl more often than any quarterback who ever played the game. Seahawks fans had yet another reason to cheer when the front office gained an additional first round pick in the college draft by trading Rick Meyer to the Bears. With all these moves coupled with the returning roster of talented stars, the message could not be more obvious. 
the Seattle Seahawks won't back down on or off the field as they build the team into an NFL power and a valued asset to the entire Pacific Northwest. New Edge Pro Gel presents the Seattle Seahawks Ultimate Performance of 1996. In their battle with Minnesota in Week 11, the Seattle Seahawks unleashed an all-out attack against the Vikings. The Seahawks defense squashed the Vikings ground attack, holding Minnesota to a mere 15 yards rushing. Seattle converted four Vikings turnovers into 29 points. Quarterback John Fries connected with Ricky Prohl and Joey Galloway for touchdowns. With their 42-23 triumph, the Seattle Seahawks earned their third victory in a row.